Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the comprehensive and very descriptive comic course, uh, <coughs> decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. In the lecture number 7, we are going to talk about the certain transitions and certain shift that took place in the development of comic studies. So far, what we have been doing in this course is looking at certain terms certain jargons, certain developments, certain transitions just to understand that how comic studies developed, the shape which it has taken, how it came into this particular shape, what are the ideas, what are the changes, what are the influences, what are the factors involved into it to make this happen. So, in today's uh, lecture, I will continue from where I left and uh, I will talk about certain nuances. In fact, today also you are going to be familiar with certain terms and you will see that how we are going to read comic studies. We will get to know the gaps, right? I am sure that you must be very familiar with the word called filling the gap, right? Or let us say, for example, reading against the grain, which simply suggests that the way we have been habituated, right? the way we are have been reading a particular set of uh, text, things have changed so far. Now, there is a something else, there is extra attention that is required if we are going to understand the meaning of the text. Comic is also one among them, it is also a kind of a text which needs a special attention where it needs a contrapuntal reading of our uh, <coughs> students so that they can know what it is talking about. It also we need to see that how it is negotiating with contemporary societies. At the same time, our job is also to look at what happened in other different kinds of art and how comic studies is very much related to that. All right. So, what we saw also, we could see uh, Hogarth's contribution, we could see Rolandson's contribution and we were looking at Toffer's contributions and also we talked about that what are the reasons for which lot of comic artist interest got declined. So, moving ahead, today we are going to talk about what we were discussing that if we are to look at American comics following the tradition of Toffer, the first among them is an anonymous work called the College Experience of Ichabod Academia. Right? So, you could see on your screen, the name itself is available. Soon after, the American Gold Rush begins in 1848, which inspires a 68 pages picture story novel in prints by brother James A. and Donald F. Reed called Journey to the Gold Diggins by Jeremiah Saddlebacks. Right? So, you could see on your screen the name and uh, by whom it came out. So, in the way of the following uh, trend, we another person we have Philip Cozen. He publishes The Adventure of Mr. Tom Plump, right? As you could see, the adventure of Mr. Tom Plump on the same issue, and let me tell you that it came out in 1850. The fact that plagiarism was extant on the other side of Atlantic too is made evident by how New York publisher Dick and Fitzgerald sold the titles retailing for 25 or 30 cents, including works that were blatant plagiarism of the Swiss model. For instance, the wonderful and amusing doings by sea and land of Oscar 
Shanghai had a several direct plates copied from Monsieur crypto game. On the note of plagiarism, returning to the European fund Aubert, A U B E R T, the same shop in which top for pirated editions were sold also saw the meteoric rise of a French artist Paul Gustave Doré, who published his first two work and the name of his work is Les Trevox de Hakule and that was also known as, let me write it for you, Levers of Hercules, right, Levers of Hercules. There, when he was 15 years old, which was later added to the Jabot's collection, Doré's third picture book, album in French, Des Agreements, the Hume Weyos, the Agreement, is a French name, that was also known as, let me uh, write for you, Un pleasant pleasure trip, right? unpleasant pleasure trip as well as Sam's impression the voyage the Monsieur Boniface took heavy influences from the French episodes of Stern Tristram Sandy. So, here you could see that how the people were highly influenced uh, by Tristram Sandy's the book uh, written by Lawrence Stan, the technique that he deployed, the same thing that we find in this kind of work of art. And second thing, I am continuing with the same idea that how certain plagiarized work were continued, it fostered, in fact, people could not make a difference between the original and the plagiarized work. All right, so here you uh, go back and see again the slides. You see that despite the above mentioned instances of plagiarism, or near plagiarism, the likes of Sam, Dore and Grandville, right, Dore and then we have also Sham and then we had Grandville, right. So, the likes of Sam, Dore and Grandville would go beyond the top Topharian format to freely explore the idea of new print, while Sam would depart from the tradition of the top Topharian horizontal railroading, Dore would populate the blank space of the page with several Krushank Dulesk visionates. So, I am sure that you remember the doodle one, right? Yes. So, merge them with the zigzagging journey of the gaze across the page, completely distanced from the strictly linear kind of a tunnel vision that Toffer used in his works. Dore also introduced the Mish an abaim, right? Remember this, this is a one kind of, uh, you can call it a jargon or you can call it a new term, right? I will explain you in a minute, just give me a second. So, what happens this, that he introduced Miss an abaim tradition into comic arts, where a certain artwork or variation of it would be contained within itself. Hence, expanding the boundaries of a comic art practices and blurring the lines between comics and art, despite certain flack that perception of the form experienced in the 1850s, artists like Sham, Dore and Granville were able to create a precedent for the later generations of illustrators and cartoonists in the form of a singular comic novels, deploying all the polygraphic resources, all the eccentricities, transgression and mish and abain. However, the way in which the humoristic illustrators of the 19th century created the picture stories or novel in prints, be it originally on plates or woodcuts and more often than not wearing towards anti-academic art did not quite qualify to be termed as comic strips, I mean a terminology which would bring comics into the everyday household in the late 19th century through magazines like Harper's Bazaar and the Daily Graphic, the first American newspaper, right? This Harper's Bazaar and the Daily Graphic is the first American newspaper to include daily illustrations among others and most importantly through the world of newspaper, all right? So, before I go further, let me take a break and explain to you what I mean by Miss N. Abain. 
for a second think about the term called intertextuality by Julia Kristeva right that was popularized by Julia Kristeva. What does the term intertextuality means right it simply suggests that if you are reading a textbook there is a possibility that there are another text already available into that particular text which means that knowingly or unknowingly author has talked about another text as well. In fact, intertextuality goes to the extent to say that a text is not possible without taking the help of another text. I mean I am sure that you all know that after the post toxism things became very uh, I would say complicated to understand and to know what it suggests to us, but intertextuality simply means for us as like what I want to make you understand in relation to comic studies that when you are reading a text you are going to get the reference of another text as well or another character as well for to make a sense of that particular sentence or that particular page you have to know about another text as well right. So, which means not only one text there are multiple texts available. So, when I am saying this I am sure that uh, the idea of a bhaktins uh, dialogism or let us say for example, heteroglossia is also being echoed in your mind right. So, which we have talked so I am not going to repeat it. In the same fashion miss and abime is something let me explain to you for the example first. Uh, we have a very famous known comic artist called uh, I mean and we, we have been reading her Amruta Patil. If you read her work what will you see right when you are reading sometime you see that in the plates Frederick Collows right Frederick Collows work is also available on it. So, which simply means that you need to know the painting or you need to know the work of art Freda Collows concerned with. So, that you can uh, see what Amruta Patil is talking about. So, which means that it is not exactly copied from somewhere, but there is a certain twist that you will see right. So, which is I would say that it is a slightly uh, indenized that you could uh, uh, find it out where there is a possibility that there is a something called a dress change. So, it involves original art, but at the same time the purpose of uh, using that original art is to create the same kind of emotion that was echoed in uh, that kind of a work all right. So, when we are reading Amrita Patil's work what interestingly we see that the reference or the work of art Freda Collows invited into this work of art. The reason is that she wants to create the same kind of emotion when you saw that kind of a painting. So, coming back to the exact theory or the exact term miss and abime as the name itself suggests that when you are reading comic artist you have to know certain other paintings or certain other work of art. So, that work of art slightly indenized or you will see certain dress change or something minute change is made into the same panel into that work of art and introduced in its in the work of art of the comic artist. And now you have to make a sense you have to guess that why is it used like this what the idea that author wants to convey to us why is it in certain way because then you will realize that because it is not possible right. Let us say may give you an example suppose I mean that would be more uh, relatable suppose you have heard about Draupadi right. So, suppose for example, when I say that the same condition happened what happened with the Yudhishthir or Draupadi. So, you can not relate it until and unless you have read Mahabharata or you have watched Mahabharata or you have heard about the stories of Mahabharata and the moment you hear you disturb and drop the same emotion, the same scene, the same description is created in your mind and then you could relate with the particular event that why did I give reference to Draupadi all this say you this here all right. So, this is what we say miss and abime which means that certain painting or certain character or certain art directly copied from there in the original one and slightly changes may be and the reason is so that the same emotion can be created 
in the work of art which you are reading by giving the reference to another work of art all right so this is what we call miss and abide so think about it and make sure that you read properly when you are looking at the comics you can see the references you see that why some artist is talking about miss and abide so going back to the slides now you see that on the slide interestingly that pop historian rick marshall while discussing the developments in the history of a comics in the 19th century uh, observes four major outcome of this shift from the publication of novel in prints to the diffusion of comics in newspapers and magazine in the late 19th century especially in america since the experimentations on the european front were starting to reach the other side of atlantic during this time all right so let me talk about all the important shift that uh, uh, that took place the firstly marshall let me uh, write the name m a r e s c h a l l all right so remember this name as a uh, important name he notices a growing affinity among american people for cartoon humor right this is the first one second a rise in an informal corporation of illustrators who would later be hailed as the fathers of american comics all right so this is second reason is what we see there is a rise in informal corporation of illustrators who are later uh, who became uh, like who were related later on with uh, american comics third reason that we see a gradual movement from the presentation of the entire page as a single panel to a sequentiality in the panel structure i have already discussed about this so i am not going to talk about a sequentiality again where multiple panels are al aligned alongside one another moving to the last one which means the fourth the creation of cultural milieu that allowed for a market preference for the use of colors in newspaper so see what i'm talking about here that what are the shift that took place is simply i'm talking about the transition from novel in prints to comic strips all right so novel in prints to comic strips is also because the american audience american people so interest grew in comics right they are people who wanted to read cartoons and i have been giving this reference since the beginning that when you read the newspaper in fact importantly all the uh, good newspaper i would say let's say times of india the indian express which i am uh, uh, familiar with which i read every day so you see that there there is a comic strip available why right it's because b people also want some humor in the form of a let's say cartoon right so there is a some strips uh, because if we don't have a time because we are reading the newspaper we have to go to do our everyday work or we have to join uh, uh, <clears throat> 10 to 5 office job so what happens that it creates a humor in us and we can just read quickly about uh, a comic strip all right the second what happens also that uh, interestingly as i have been talking about that illustrators right you remember when i was saying in the victorian age there was certain uh painting not i would say painting but certain sketches that you notice on the novels uh, in the front or in the between somewhere so later on these illustrator also got opportunity and they became a comic artist right so so it's also about that how they were introduced to the comic uh, culture right and later on what we also interestingly see that the kind of a color right people like changing cultural milieu because of certain a uh, gradual development in american society and the preferences for a particular color so i'll talk in details about the particular cultural change that were happening in american society but for now what you need to understand that there are certain market preference for a, what kind of a color you are going to use so i'm sure that we all remember that lot of things lot of our everyday activities is being governed and channelized or let's say regulated by what market wants from us right so which is why if you see certain fashion coming in into the picture a certain lifestyle 
or let's say for example certain uh, even in your academia's uh, uh, preferences what to teach what not to teach right so these all are being governed and regulated by the market preferences right what market wants from us in the same fashion when you are looking at the changes from novel in prints to the comic strips what you notice is that uh, uh, so there is a market preference for a color so which is why what happens that particular color is used in a particular fashion all right so there are uh, these are the important changes that we notice from novel in prints to comic strips so going further let's uh, talk more on it we have the another very famous person called wilhelm bush right so despite this shift in approach there is a one artist whose work stand aside from the likes of hogarth and toffer as a third distinctive form of the novel in prints and he is no one but german painter and poet right so wilhelm bush is a, as the name like you can identify by so far uh, by name itself which country he belongs to so wilhelm bush is a german painter and poet all right and he bush uh, i would say that he departed from the general movement that comics had started to embark on post dore right in his uh, work and had a mix of rustic and contemporary themes where he evoked popular imagery combined with the tone of nursery rhymes legend and folk tales whose style leaned towards an academic form of painting rather than spontaneous anti academic art that would be seen in comic strips in magazines from american comic artist like franklin morris howard right and then we have arthur burdett frost then we have shad b griffin and then we have Frederick Opar, and then we have Eugene Zim Zimmerman, and then we have George Lux, and in fact, there are many people more. The most important them being outcalled, right? Which uh, we I have already given the references. However, before we get into outcalled, right? The name, right? I may be wrong in certain pronunciation because most of the name are either in French or in German. So. I am just writing it out in case uh, you have a correct pronunciation, right. So, outcalled, before discussing outcalled and his legacy in the American comics tradition, it is important to address some key issue in the development of a comics as a form in the late 19th century, alright. So, before I go further, so the point that I would like to make, right, so because uh, I am not sure whether uh, I am sure that like whether you like you want to think in terms of taking up this course obviously I have designed this course for a beginners and also who want to go deeper into it. So, if suppose you want to build up a career and you see that interestingly that lot of people around us are doing folklore studies right they are talking about the original tradition or let us say for example indigenous. Uh, uh, indigenous tradition of certain community and culture. So, people lot of people are uh, getting into folklore right, but the problem is most of the time what they like as certain jumps and go that uh, comics has nothing to do with the folklore right. But just now I made a very important point for you all that if you want to get into the folklore studies comics is also one way at least to know what is happening right, what is going around all right. So, it is not only related to the folklore studies, but what I am saying that any kind of a study that you want to take up comic studies is one way through which you can start your research project. Moving ahead let me also talk about the 19th century's certain important changes and shifts so that you can relate with the comics. See I mean it is a like building up another course for 19th century cultural development or transition that took place in 19th century. But I will speak one important thing that is very much related to comics and modernity. The reason is that what like we all need to know what modernity is. So, 
if we look at the modernity it is uh, given to us in a form of operation right which simply suggests that we all are given a particular way of a method through which we are going we are about to function or we are trained to function right so there are a lot of people you can look at uh, uh, like Foucault you can look at, look at Lukacs like people they have been talking about that how modernity intervened in our lifestyles. So, here what I am saying that one thing that you can think that the way technology developed in the modern age that kind of a development was not possible without the modern age came into the picture. So, one thing that we see that technological advancement marks modernism right. So, technological advancement and when there is a technological advancement it does not only changes our lifestyle but also directly influences and alters the work of art and comic is one among them. What also modernity did and I want to go into the fred and all but try to understand that modernity changed our entire way of looking the society all right. So, comics where uh, certain things were allowed in comics and certain things were functioning in comics after modernity intervened comics has also had to go certain changes uh, like like as I have been reiterating in this course that new technology removes or let us say replaces old technology right. So, it takes a new shape. So, all right. So, keep in the mind that certain changes occurred in comics is also because of the way modernity started taking its shape in America or in the rest of the world all right. So, moving uh, uh, back to the slides please. So, there were uh, uh, you see that the novel in prints so tradition that uh, began with Hogarth in the 18th century it proliferated with Toffer in the early 19th century and saw a change in direction in the late 19th century which established the comic history format in the arena of cultural production. There were three epistemological advancement that box right there were three technological advancement that marked this transition from the novel in prints to the comic strip which we are going to talk about. So, the first one that we see is the contribution of the printing press right the contribution of the printing press and this contribution of the printing press developed comics form post toffer right. So, which means what I am trying to suggest to you here that there is a called pre toffer and post toffer. So, uh, contribution of the press to the development of comics from post offer. So, what you can examine as a research project if you want that what happened pre offer and what happened post offer how this printing press contributed into it all right. So, second is the camera and the role of photographic tradition in the representation shown in pics right. So, second thing that we see is the invention of the camera all right. I am also able to reach to you it is because camera is possible right because camera has happened to this society. The third I mean uh, significance of the phonograph in creating an audio visual stitch on paper using labels followed by speech balloons these developments were tied closely with the nascent medium of cinema too as uh, we will uh, discuss it in the later uh, section of uh, 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 this lecture all right. So, the concern that I am reflecting over here is simple that three things that we keep in the mind when we are going to look at the post offer one what printing press did to the comics or like not to the society, but to the comics one printing press. Second I am asking you to look at the contribution of a camera or let us say for example, photographic film right. So, what does camera do right it takes the pictures it shows how it is it cre like creates a very different kind of a world altogether bit like I would in fact suggest to you that 
uh, you can take a pause with this video and think for a second that what happened before camera was invented. In fact, let me put it this way, before you knew about the camera, right? how a society would have been or imagine without camera a society, right? Let us say for example, I am sure that you are holding your mobile phone. If you are watching uh, through the tablet, there is also camera built in even with the laptop, even in the uh, mobile phone. You see that camera is very much around. You are uh, everywhere circled with a camera, even if it is a CCTV, it is also function like a camera, all right? So, I am just asking you to reflect for a second and go back to think a society without camera. So, you can think like think for a second and then also think about that how camera contributed in a different way in the development of comic studies and then we have obviously phonograph and I am sure that you know what phonograph is and how does it relate with the sound. So, these are the three important instrument I would say or uh, uh, I would say that equipments that brought a lot of change in the imagination of the comic artist and also how now comics is going to be written for us, right. So, uh, we have to think uh, about these three equipments or three invention done by our scientists or by our society and how it changed, how it saved not only the comics, but also how it saved us, all right. So, moving ahead we have the role of a, a printing press, but so top variant picture stories were introduced to the press for the first time, right. You look at this, top variant picture stories were introduced to the press for the first time and the time is 1845, when Cham, right and Cham, so plagiarism of a top force drawing were published as History de Monsieur Crypto Gaming, right? I have already talked about it in the last class. The first French illustrator newspaper, La Illustrian, as stated before, the parameters of a success of a genre are different for the creator and the consumer, right? So, it is a very much uh, uh, become very uh, different that how it is for consumer and how it is for the artist. Like I have been talking about it that how plagiarism like plagiarized work was highly consumed by the people. However, creators were extremely uh, dissatisfied this kind of a production of work of art. The reason is that they had no incentive, but that kind of work is produced and this kind of plagiarized work is entertaining us and we are not much bothered about what is happening to the artist, all right. So, remember one thing and pick, in fact, when I am talking about it, I am also giving a clue that how you can take up this as a research project. Like think for example, that when these changes are occurring, when these changes are taking place, when they are, they are making a print in the history of a comics, what is happening to the people, to the reader who are reading it and what is happening to the artist. I am sure that they both are receiving this kind of a development very differently. They for both of them this kind of a cultural production of a work of art are not being received in the same spirit as it is being received by the audience or by the artist, all right. So, what I am giving you a clue that everything is not being perceived or received equally by everyone, all right. So, like I am making this point and I am, I want you to when you are delving into the comic studies, keep this point in back of your mind and read accordingly, all right. So, moving to the point that I am making on your uh, PPT. So, go back to your uh, videos and see the slides carefully. Now, you see that this parameter of a success of a genre, which is a very different for a creator and the consumer, top first aversion right, top, top first aversion for creating multiple iterations of the original work. The copied work itself met with considerable sales and popular success at the time and this led to, right, this like plagiarism 
or the kind of pleasurized work are being received by people like anything. This led to stories created in Tauferian format gaining the favor of the international press, right? Especially in the countries like France, Great Britain, United States of America and Germany. In the 1850s, the first illustrated weekly news magazine, I am giving you the examples as well and this one you see that the illustrated London news magazine I am talking about, they started publishing weekly, right? they started publishing picture stories periodically in its Christmas supplements and then we have like it, it is, it must be established here that even before the illustrated London news came into being British weekly humor magazine that is called the punch right. Let me uh, reiterate this fact right. What I am trying to establish here that even before the illustrated London news this one came into being came into being British weekly humor magazine called punch or you can call it the London Shariwari 1841 to 2002 had already introduced and defined the cartoon as a humoristic sketch on a surface that had the shape of a cardboard box known as cartoon right which I was talk had talked in the first lecture in Italian. So, the adventure of Mr. Vardant Green let me write it for you the adventure of Mr. Verdant Green, all right. So, just a second, right. Mr. The adventure of Mr. Verdant Green by Edward Bradley, right. Edward Bradley who wrote under the pen name called called a uh, cathboard right let me write it for you c u t h b e i t cathboard bede was the first picture story published in the illustrated london news in the two installment during the winter of 1851 to 1852 so moving further ahead in time in the 1860 and 1870s the growth in the reception of the picture stories format independently was much slower than its counterpart in the newspaper supplements, especially after the arrival of a strong competition from the illustrated London news. So, the graphic in as much as picture, the graphic in as much as picture stories in the 1880s now in color were published in both the winter as well as the summer supplements. So, the graphic was published each Saturday, right? Each Saturday and the editors were known to undertake the practice of soliciting artwork from anyone and everyone who would even be tangentially, right? Who would even be tangentially interested in sketching regarding any incident of interest that might have transpired in the city. So, this sudden boom created a completely new genre of a journalistic picture stories heralded by the two biggest illustrated news wikis in Europe. The one is the graphic, right, the daily graphic and the second one is the Harper's Bazaar, all right. So, these picture stories of the graphic and the illustrated London news reflected the way of the life of the upper middle class readership and the periodical nature of the seri serious comic illustrated press closely followed the cyclical habits and behavior of its readership. So, this implies a close connection that existed between the picture stories published in the newspaper and the readers who would in comic century ingrain the comic strip into their daily life. So, the American magazines so circulation that is 1921 to 1927 addresses this symbiosis 
unequally, unequivocally later in the 1920s. So, Topfer's pictorial language and newfound journal was timely in that it suggested to denounce the mindless mechanical routine imposed on a man by the industrial world with a tunnel vision that strengthened the satirical stake that the picture stories had on modernity and the industrial order. So, see the point what I am making here is simple, right? What I am trying to suggest to you with these slides and why I am showing this my slides and also the name of the author, the comic artist and what they have written. So, that if you want to let us say as I have been talking about that comics can also be the part of uh, uh, knowing the history of any particular country or custom or culture. So, I am showing this so that you can go back and read these stories or let us say these comic books to know what has happened in a particular time. They reflect a particular society in a particular fashion. Comic is also an art that is a, what I am trying to establish. At the same time, I also want to show you that how these kind of a conditioning outside of level or the kind of a lifestyle, the kind of a behavior being practiced is being reflected or I would say being channelized and author is trying to imagine in a particular way and is showing in this comics book. So, before I go ahead, you could see that 18th, 19th and 20th century is an age of modernity, right, where things are rapidly changing, the people's lifestyle, people's uh, growing economic interest, their greed, everything is being tapped during this 18th, 19th century by certain work of art, alright. So, as if we have read Marx, right, Marx is talking about that how the labor of a uh, labor of a people is being exploited by these industries or let us say for example, that is what he says bourgeois and proletariat. So, I am not getting in the marks, but what he is talking about that he is saying that how in this contemporary society where the mode of production is capitalism and obviously that led by industry obviously one important factor, where people have become so mechanical, right. There is no emotional involvement and engagement with the kind of a work that they are doing. They are doing the work mechanically that is if there is no relation that they can share with even the machine with which they are working, even with the people with which they are working and with the surroundings and the kind of production or the work of art or let us say anything that they are producing, there is no emotional attachment with that. So, this is led this was led happen because of industry growing up where people are just concerned about minting money, alright. So, now let us not go more about what modernity is, what industry does to us, but I am talking about a specifically that this kind of art style, this kind of a behavior, how it is being tapped by these comic artists, right. How these comics are becoming a kind of a voices, right. You remember Mikhail Bakhtin where you have to read between the gaps and see that there are many voices coming out. So, these voices are doing in contributing to know what is happening to us, right. So, these kind of lifestyle is being I would say ref is re reflected in the comics and at the same time being critiqued, being satirized by these comics, alright. So, uh, I would just recommend you that please give space some of your valuable time and read these kind of illustrations or these kind of a magazines of label which I have given you the uh, like enough name and you can read it alright. So, going back to that slides. So, look at the slides which I am showing it to you. So, now if you see the slide at this point right what is happening here right. So, this is a I would say that uh, uh, this appears to be a tension at the roots of the form, which rebels against order by encouraging an anti-academic genuine stance, while at the same time seeping into mass culture through the same means that it tries to ridicule and it is reasonable to believe that most of the major proponents of the comics in the early 20th century knew about this inner tension on which 
the form of the form was built so see so the point is that every work of art has a tension right and and the problem is that when we are writing a work of art and we are trying to critique but also we cannot escape from this kind of octopus uh, panjas that it has given to us right i'm deliberately using the word panja because you can see the impact uh, 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 made through this kind of sentences right so what is happening that in the modernism see what they did they found a new kind of art to speak about the new things right let's say for example stream of consciousness interior monologue using the myths very often in their works of art the reason is what kind of a things they want to talk about it's not possible to without introducing or inventing a new form in literature all right the same thing is happening in the comics even the comics has to change its shape it has a change its dynamics it has to bring up new vocabularies it has to come up with a new grammar it has to change its entire boundary to address the problem that it wants to speak on right so what is happening in the same time it is want to critique but unfortunately as we all very much know that even we try to resist capitalism but we will be hunted down by capitalism right and which is why you see that any kind of structure is very difficult to break down and build up a new structure sometime what happens that we even don't know in the process of a breaking down when we itself become a consumer in this producing the same kind of structure we even become like we unknowingly become a part of it we are participating in the same kind of production of structure all right so keeping this kind of a paradox in our mind when we are going to read comics what interestingly you notice that even comics at the same time when is going to critique this kind of a lifestyle or mechanism of level in the society it also getting hunted it's also getting hunted down by the capitalism or this mechanical uh, society and they also become part of it right so they also are producing it so which is why i am taking so look at the slide please again so this is what i am talking about that when this uh, uh, appears to be the tension at the root of the form which rebels against order by encouraging an anti academic genuine stance at the same time seeping into mass culture through the same means that it tries to ridicule right this is the same method through which it is going to ridicule it is also becoming the part of it through which it is building the same structure right so when wood engraved illustrations were introduced to the idea of electric light a new grammar of light and the shadows are seen in the graphic and the illustrated london news where the solid rays of a white light and the shadowy silhouettes and the sudden blinding flashes not only not only drew on the arabesque and the gothic arabesque right and gothic influences of the period but also anticipated the cinema noir i am sure that you all are familiar with this particular tradition and uh, and if you look back before 1980s or less than 1990s there is hardly even a single picture or less a cinema art of level which talk about cinema noir tradition right it's a later development it's not a new it's a very later and you are supposed to think for a second that why cinema noir tradition developed after a particular period of time why not before right why this arabesque why this gothic all right so so these kind of a comic strips right so these kind of a comic strips so which in the late 19th century also tried to make sense of whatever was new at the time by hybridizing it with some familiar idiom which was made possible by the affordances of the polygraphic approaches to the style that took note of the emerging technology brought about the industrial revolutions right so let me I'll write it for you industrial revolutions which i am here simply suggesting what does it mean industrial revolution in the sense of 
photographic and microscopic images right this things you would have not got had there not been industrial revolutions right so photographic and microscopic images what next we have x rays think about what x rays do right and also uh, just a second chrono photography right chrono photography and then we have ninetoscope k i just a second k i n e t o s c o p e right ninetoscope so these things is possible also because of industrial revolutions it's not i'm just critiquing it i'm also talking about that the contribution that inter industrial revolution did but you remember that in only in the sense of when because of uh, photographic microscopic images x rays chronophotography the nitoscope what it did to comics right so there are many more which truly expanded the genre right and made it a staple product available to consume and disseminate among middle class household so you see had not industrial revolution taken place it would have not been possible to read comics widely uh, among or like, like across india or across world one without printing press obviously it would have not been possible right it would have like widely it has not been circulated and consumed second because of industrial revolutions comics became more possible lot of like lot of techniques evolved and that helped in talking about comics or comics coming into picture for us third thing let's say for example what is a gothic right what is a gothic tradition again let me go back to the literature first it is a development that we see in the 18th 19th century and we also realize that people talk about that it is a medieval age where we could see certain uh, uh, you say uh, sense or certain issues available in the medieval tradition middle ages and later on it is being talked in uh, romantic age and later on like developed by lot of people i'm sure that you know that but, but what is a gothic tradition gothic is something that which is not possible to talk but through the av available forms and genres it's the only thing let's say for example i have to talk about the complexity of the person which is going on in our mind let's say for example if i have to talk about uh, the sexualities right so gothic became one way to talk about certain things so during the uh, 18 like 19th century gothic tradition came into the picture and people are talking about their frustrations their anger in fact uh, like madness is being highly spoken about it and you see that even dickens uh not exactly but picks up certain examples or let's say certain uh, features of a gothic and he introduced in his novels like miss havisham we all know about this uh, fabulous character that how it is related with the gothic kind of setting so setting like to talk about that kind of setting to talk about that kind of a theme to talk about that kind of a manner is not possible until and unless we experiment with the new techniques we experiment with the new vocabularies right so how it have been possible would have not been possible if industrial revolution would have not taken place and these kind of x rays and photographic images not been introduced so this what they did they also helped the comic artist to think and imagine in a new particular way to talk about a new particular theme or new particular art or let's say for example new kind of a boundaries all right so keeping this in your mind what i'm saying that that these kind of things were available to the middle class is also because industrial revolution took place and see what also i'm talking about that this is that history when you go back you have to keep like keep uh, note of it that in this particular time lot of things are happening lot of people are coming into the picture and they all are contributing to something they all are talking something and comics are flourishing right it's not only that only certain people are reading in fact the middle class people who are more concerned as it is called about the morality 
comics are being acceptable to them, right? Because they can relate it to them. I'll talk about the Superman and Batman and other comics later on. But for now, think about it so that we can relate what we are talking. And it's my humble request that pick up some novels which concerns these particular themes, these particular genre, or let's say this particular kind of a form. And whatever I have spoken so far, think and read, reflect on it so that what I am speaking, it can you can really grasp, uh, you can really understand. All right, so I'll end this lecture here, and we will uh, move to continue the same thing, but in a differently. And talking more things are coming uh, into place. But uh, for now, I would uh, end this lecture. See you in the next class. Take care. Have a good time. Bye bye.